Good morning, guys. Chris at Dentless Touch. Uh, this is the weekend here, and normally we work on gas tanks and fenders. Ryan's over here working on his first Harley Davidson fender. He's going through our uh, training course. It's just a week because he already knows how to push. But anyway, guys, I want to preface this video. It is from an interview that we did at Mobile Tech Expo in Las Vegas. Dave and I uh, was joined with the guys at Ding King, and we just talked about different the industry and my thoughts about the industry, and it just adds really, really good questions, and I wanted to share this video with you guys. Also, I want to thank Dent Surgeon for giving us these hats. We appreciate that for sure. Um, and that's it, guys. See you on the next video, and definitely enjoy this interview. Thanks. Hey, guys, welcome back. Uh, Lee Roth with the Ding King Training Institute at the inaugural Las Vegas MTE, the Mobile Tech Expo. I'm super stoked to be sitting here um, with a guy that I've only gotten a chance to meet in person a couple of times uh, at the last couple of mobile techs, but guy's got a monster presence on, on, the, on social media and just does, he's an incredible technician and great work. Uh, Mr. Christopher Thank Ray you. with Dentless Touch, Appreciate along it. with David as well. And, and of course with James uh, Ramirez with us, uh, you know, and, and I'm really excited to be able to sit down and talk to you for a few yeah. minutes. Um, you know. You you have such a presence on the internet you know you do videos all the time and you're talking to people regularly that you know somebody like yourself we can have the conversation of where the industry is because you get feedback on your videos and you talk to everybody and you know it's not just oh look what I fixed right you know that's that's not what your videos are about that's not what my videos are about or James's videos it's about the industry and what we can do as a group and where we can take an industry that's this big and make it this big, but with more people mm -hmm. and make it a tighter industry. Yeah. How do you feel about where the industry is and where it's going? I think it's gonna be a boom, just like the Ceramic Pro and the detailers. I think they, four or five years ago, the Ceramic Pro, or probably longer than that, seven years ago, Ceramic Pro came in, mm -hmm. dumped a, invest a lot of advertising budget to right. bring in coatings. Mm -hmm. I really didn't know about coatings. I didn't either. And so now, which brought into the paint correction. Mm -hmm. And I would say now my truck is getting paint corrected with one of my one of my guys as we speak right now. Right. So I'm learning about this, and now the detailer is no longer doing those couple of hundred dollar details on the in the parking lot anymore. Right. They now have shops with the paint correction, the mm -hmm. coatings, the clear bras. Sure. And it just helped that, it just inflated that entire industry to the forefront. And, and I think it, PDR is right at that edge, right? Yeah. The boom is about to happen. Well, and what you said a second ago, it took that $200 parking lot detail, which what you and I both know wasn't a detail. Right, right, it, it, was, it, was, it was a yeah. fancy car wash, right, right, is what course, it was. Yeah. And, and it was it was a mobile car wash, right, is all right. it was, <laughs> to a $1,500 $2,000 income stream ticket right? because you're doing a thousand dollar ceramic coating you're doing a $500 yep. you know paint correction and you're doing a detail with everything beforehand and you now have instead of 200 bucks in the parking lot you got two thousand dollars in your pocket now obviously there's more work too of course absolutely it, but it allows that technician to really hone into the end to his you know feel mm -hmm. and become a master of that taking swirls out really yep. getting that that paint better than the factory. Mm -hmm. And so oh, you absolutely. can take pride in that, in that, in that repair right there. Yeah, I had, I had my truck, and I've got a 13 F-150 okay. black, and so it's and it's been through the paces. I had mine paint corrected here about a year ago, and it, it looked, it was brand new. Brand new, yeah. I've, I, I had to go fix a few dents on my own truck, <laughs> which we, we never do, right? right, right. Our, ours is always the last to be repaired. Yeah. But I had to go, because the damn thing looked so good, mm. I couldn't stand to have the couple of dents on it at that point. And that's where the PDR side is going to go. They're exactly. going to see the paint correction have, you know, is done, mm -hmm. and they're starting to, customers are starting to, like, really appreciate their vehicle. It's mm -hmm. expensive, just like the house. You so get things done. You know? With you being on the East Coast, mm -hmm. and, of course, you know, I'm, in, I'm mostly in Texas, but I, I do Texas, Denver, and California. James is based out of California. What is your market more like? Because we, we, you know, in, in our training, and we have guys calls all the time, talking about pricing and different things in different markets, and it's that can be huge across the country. You know, yeah. what's y'all's market like out there for, yeah, P, for PDR? I think it's best for Dave to answer that question yeah. because he switched from Chicago 
to oh, yeah. the DC area. And Absolutely. Can, yeah. You see that uh, difference? Uh, what I've seen, uh, Chicago's a working and living city. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, you have, you have people living and working in the city of Chicago and the surrounding areas. The population is huge mm -hmm. uh, compared to now on the East Coast. But the clientele uh, in the market there, uh, what I've noticed is now we're dealing with military, politics, government, a, a whole different yep. Yep. group of people. Right. Uh, and the cars also are affected by that as well, that they're buying. Sure. Um, what we're seeing now, or at least what I'm seeing, um, kind of like the baseline car is a higher end vehicle. Mm -hmm. And then they're taking pride in it as well. And they have, uh, I don't want to say the money to fix it, but they just they take the time to uh, spend the money on the details, spend the money on the PDR. They care. Mm -hmm. exactly. They care, they care right. about their vehicles. And so that's what I'm seeing uh, for me uh, in that change between the Midwest and Chicago and now on the East Coast in this tri-state area that we're in now. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, y'all have a strong market as far as what you can price things at, Correct. you know, based on. So, James, tell us about what you run into because, you know, you, you still fix cars regularly yeah, I mean, about our, California. Yeah, no, our, our market there in California, it, it's, it has a lot to do with, again, you know, the, 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 the car owner themselves because you're going to have some people that have just, you know, more dollars than cents and they really just don't give a crap about their car, you know. And then you're going to have other people who have those same higher end cars and they're willing to pay whatever it takes to take and, and, and it's funny to me to see those people in California when I'm out there yeah. that don't care. You know, they, they've got this $200,000 car, but they'd rather trade it in than fix it. I'm like, yep. I, I don't get it. And, you know, Ben, based in Texas, Texas people, it's kind of split. It, it really okay. is, you know. Okay. But when I'm in Denver, it's like you guys out there. They even a lower end car, you know. Not that I'm saying Subaru is lower end, but we all hate working on Subarus because yeah, metal's us off. More inexpensive. Less expensive. <laughs> they take pride in their car. It doesn't matter yes. what. It, it, can, yeah. it can be a 2002 Chevy Cobalt. Yep. You know, that's got 300,000 miles on it. It's their it's their daily ride. It's what they needed to use daily to get back and forth to work or whatever. They take pride in it. Yeah. And the market is stronger up there because of it. So yeah. it's just interesting how it's so different across the U.S. and market to market and how it affects pricing. But you need to tailor your business for that. Though. Absolutely. That's, that's Absolutely. Where ceramic coating and, and you know, paint correction and, and, and painless end repair have kind of crossed over and blended because the same person is going to pay for the paint correction mm -hmm. and, you know, the coatings and their, you know, these traps and all this stuff. Yeah. And so it crosses over, you know, because they, they care about that car. Right. Well, now they're going to pay for that paint because they really want to take care of that vehicle, you know, so they have to be that kind of crossover now where they're blending into not one, but they're, it's easier for them to come together, you know, more so than they did in the past. And right. I've noticed it's a higher resale buy. Yeah. Now, when I go trade in a vehicle, does it have a coating on it? Sure. Does it have the little back half, a little cover over it? Exactly. Now, he's sitting in the office, he doesn't know, but he's asking me a certain question yeah. so you can see if he can sell either wholesale or whether he's going to exactly. keep that vehicle. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's kind of weird. They go out, and what are they looking for? Paint damage, dents. Mm -hmm. So it's either spend the money now, which is <laughs> a small amount, yep. or they take thousands of dollars off when you go and trade that vehicle exactly. in. Absolutely. And You're if, absolutely if we bring right. awareness to that with the customer, they'll see the value when they drive 100%. So, I forget, forgive me, how long have you been in the industry now? 15 years. Okay, so we're, you and I are about the same, that's what I yeah, thought. 15 years. David, how long have you been? On 10. On 10? Yeah. So if you have one piece of advice that you can give to an up and coming technician, you know, just the average guy out there, or even somebody that's trying to break into the industry, you know, what would that one thing be? Uh, I know, it's it's a hard question I, because we all want to sit I here and talk integrity. to them forever. Have integrity. I think. A lot of people that see this industry or even see my videos or see a lot of people's videos, they think it's quick, easy, let me go buy a set of tools and I'll be done. Right. Have patience and have integrity. Yeah. I, that's, that's yeah, there's, there's nothing easy yeah. about what we no, do. it's not. Yep. Even the other side of it, right? The detail side of it. Oh, yeah. Guy buffing a car for hours, hey, detail, days that's hard cars. work. Yes. I, I mean, I, sure. I have kudos. I mean, I'm... Yes. No, I'm, I'm out. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, out. I'm just I out. I hold a bumper for you eight know. hours. <laughs> <laughs> not that same machine no, vibrating. I'm on. not doing it. I'm sorry. What no, were you? Sorry. You mentioned of your videos. You know, I'm, I'm curious to what, what, what's your thought process on how now the video, you know, part of, of this, where you know, YouTube and all the social media and everything. How do you think that's going to change where we're at now? Because you're, 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 you're you have a good role in it. Yeah. Hopefully, I'm helping the whole entire industry. Yeah. I'm not trying to advertise my business right. with the YouTube channel. Yeah. I'm trying to bring awareness 
to the industry. That is the overall goal with what I know how to do. If you go back to my personal channel, you'll see I've got videos nine, 10 years ago. And so that's what I can do. I can post on social media and I also can record and edit and all that good stuff. And that's my gift to the industry. Yeah. That's, you know, I'm hoping everybody does something so we can bring this up together. It, it, it's, it's our way of paying it forward. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. There you go. And, that, and that's, I mean, and I feel the same way about training, you know. Yes. Um, but no, I totally get what you're saying, and, and totally, re and, and you, your videos do reflect that. Yeah. Yeah, thank your, you. your videos thank do you. reflect the integrity that you bring to the industry, um, and I think that's the reason why you have the following with your videos that you have. Thank you. Thank you. You know, um, hence, you hence me reaching out. To, yeah, yeah you. hence me reaching out to you to want to do a video with you. So I mean, I'm crazy. I'm not stupid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, anyhow, it's been a pleasure, and I do appreciate it. Um, Downless Touch, Christopher Ray. Um, is it what give them give them their your exact YouTube channel and everything it's information? Just touch. Okay. If you actually really dive deep in search, I actually have two Dennis Touch channels. <laughs> One, I don't it says Dennis Touch, it's a seven, eight year old video. You can watch that. But yeah, just Dennistouch.com. Okay. And uh, on YouTube and mainly on YouTube right now. Appreciate Gentlemen, you. Thank you. it's been a pleasure. Thank, thank you so it. much thank for you. taking the time with us. Appreciate guys, uh, we're gonna check back with you here in just a little bit. Um, if you, you're just, these guys are gonna be hanging out, walking around. If y'all are here, uh, come by the booth. Try to find these guys, say hi to them, and we'll check you out and, and see you here in just a few minutes. Thank you guys. Bye. -bye.